Okay, in this video we're going to show you how to install Screenly OSE Open Source Edition on Raspberry Pi. Now Screenly is a digital signage program allowing you to put up images and movies and web pages on a TV and run them all the time. So it's a very nice option. It's very inexpensive. Um, we're doing this via Windows uh, and you want to know a little Linux in order to do the final configuration, we'll show you how to do that. Here are the parts you need, a Raspberry Pi, USB power supply, wireless USB adapter, SDHC card, plastic case, about $90 worth of equipment when I bought it on Amazon. Also you're going to need a SDHC card reader, we're going to do this in Windows 7, and also you're going to need a TV or monitor with an HDMI input in which to run this uh, Screenly program. We're going to set it up with an Ethernet cable connection and then move it to wireless later on. So you're going to need an Ethernet cable connection to a home uh, router network in order to do this. And other software we'll show in the video. Here's the hardware. We'll go ahead and start out with the Raspberry Pi. I got this on Amazon. It's a uh, simple enough thing to do. Um, when you open it up, you can see it's just a small single board computer with a lot of connections on it. Uh, those are uh, audio and video connections. Won't use those. On the right hand you see the two USB slots. We'll use one of those. On the left hand side you see an Ethernet port. We'll use that as well. On the top right there is the HDMI output which will go to your TV through a regular HDMI cable. And down there at the bottom uh, on the very top where I'm pointing at right now, you can see that's where the SDHC card goes. This is our micro USB power supply. So you see the connection there. An SDHC card. I use a 16 gigabit one. You can get away with 4 gigabit. And this is the wireless adapter I used. It is a USB adapter which we'll plug in. You can see it's very small, mainly packaging there. Uh, I've gotten it to work well, that's why I show the particular brand. This is the SDHC card reader. It's got a USB on one side and you plug in the cards on the other side. And the reason we're using this is because we're going to need to plug the SDHC card into the Windows 7 computer in order to program it initially. Okay, this just shows you how to put all the pieces together. Um, we're just going to go ahead and plug everything in. We'll go ahead and plug in the wireless. We don't need that right at the beginning, but we'll do it now anyway. Go ahead and plug in the, I don't know, HDMI cable. Okay, HDMI cable, we'll plug it in here. The other end will plug into the black back of your TV or monitor that you're using. Okay, and next I will show you where to plug in the SDHC card, but uh, in reality we're not going to do that yet because you need to program it first. This just shows you where it goes. And then we'll go ahead and plug in the Ethernet connection. It has to be wired to set it up at the beginning. There are ways to do it without a wired Ethernet connection, but you're going to need a keyboard and we just don't do it that way. It's much easier to do it over an Ethernet connection from your Windows 7 computer. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And then the last piece, which I didn't show you before, little connection right up there in the corner is where the USB, uh, micro USB power supply goes. So that's going to be your power connection. We'll go ahead and plug that in. That's your full configuration. Okay, now for the software. You go to the Screenly website, I think it's ScreenlyApp.com, and we're going to go up to the Open Source Edition. It's going to take us right to a page. This is actually very easy to do. They show you how to install everything. The way I did it, the easiest way is option one, where you download the custom image. It shows the requirements you have up there. We're just going to click on the custom image and download it. And this is the image. We'll go ahead and save it here that we're going to put onto our SDHC card and plug it into the computer and have it run. I move to the guide. The guide pretty much tells you how to walk through everything. They've got pictures there of using Win32 Disk Imager, which is the program we're going to use in order to write the Screenly image to the SDHC card. 
just shows the instructions here. We'll show you how they do it. Mac OS X instructions are down there, Linux as well, if you want to do it that way. So we're going to go ahead and download Win32 Disk Imager as well. Go ahead and download that, set it up. This is a program that uh, we're going to have to install on our computer. I always save the file and then install it later. Okay, so installing the Screenly software on the SDHC card. First thing we have to do is unpack that zip file that has the image in it. If you click on it in Windows, it'll show it to you, but uh, I'm going to go back and extract all so that I have the image file all set out for me to use later. So I'll go ahead and say extract all and uh, accept the default for where to put it so I know where it is and it's going to go ahead and do that. It takes a little bit of time so uh, at some point I cut the video and we just go right to the end there but this is going to give you an image file that you're going to put on the SDHC card. In order to do that we're going to use the Win32 and there's the file right there disk image file, Windows knows what it is. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back in Win32 disk imager file. I need to go ahead and install that on my computer. So I hit run and it's going to go ahead and install on my computer. I accept the defaults and it does it pretty quickly. Eventually. There it is. Next. I accept the agreement. Next. Install it in my normal spot. Next. Do something. And create a desktop icon, I guess that was, and then install. It installs it quickly. Ask me at the end, I think, if I want to read the readme text or open it. Uh, I don't want to read the readme text, but I'll say go ahead and open. This is where you find your first problem. It doesn't want to do it because you have to be administrator to do it. So what you want to do is go ahead and find your desktop icon and we'll go ahead and fix it so that you're the administrator when you run it. So there's mine right here. I'm going to right click on it, go to properties. And down here, not the first thing I click, but the second one, advanced, right there. I click on it and choose run as an administrator. Okay, I'm good to go. Now I can run it and the program will run fine. But I don't want to run it quite yet. Okay. Now I got the program running, but I need to plug my SDHC card into the computer. So I'll go ahead and plug it into my little USB card reader. You may have a card reader in your computer. Uh, I go ahead and plug it in the right way eventually. And I plug that into my computer, and my computer should recognize it and ask me what I want to do. And I just say, I'll just look at the files or do nothing. Okay, back to my computer. So I open it up, and you can see right there, the G drive is my US or uh, my SDHC card. So I want to remember that, because I don't want to write to the wrong thing. I go ahead and open up Win32 Disk Imager. And luckily, it's always chosen correctly for me. It seems to recognize what the card is. Uh, as opposed to accidentally overwriting my hard disk. But you can see right there, G Drive. Good. That's the one I want to write to. Now I need to click on the file icon and go find that disk image. So I go and I find the disk image file. That's the one I want for Screenly. Disk image file. Good. I say open. I've got the disk image file up there and it's going to the G Drive. That's exactly what I want to do. I go ahead and say write. Are you sure you want to do this? You overwrite the drive? Yes, I am positive. So I reply yes, and it will start writing to the SDHC card. Again, this takes a little while, so we will go ahead and just watch it for a little bit, and then we'll move ahead to the end. Okay, so when you're done, and this is all written, I'll go ahead and start talking about that now. It normally ejects the card already for you, so you just unplug it and put it into your Raspberry Pi at that point. But you want to make sure that you've ejected that drive, the SDHC card, and before you go ahead and put it in your Raspberry Pi. So it gets to the end, says you're successful, hooray, and then you go ahead and exit. Okay. 
Now we're going to go ahead and insert the SDHC card into the Raspberry Pi with all our other connections. We're going to plug in and power up the Raspberry Pi. And then you want to find the IP of your Screenly program after it's booted up for a couple minutes, either on a Screenly splash screen, on the monitor that you're using, or on your router, and go into the configuration page. Once we know we're all connected, we're going to go get a program called PuTTY. PuTTY allows you to do a secure shell from Windows into your Raspberry Pi, so you can talk to the operating system there and do things with it. This is why we can do things from our computer instead of having to hook up a keyboard and everything else to the Raspberry Pi. So PuTTY, that's the one you want right up there. You scroll down, I find it's the first one in the list on the PuTTY download page. And you go ahead and click that and download it. And the great thing about this is you don't have to install it. You just save it. And then whenever you want to use it, you double click it and open it up. So remember, at this point, we have to know what our IP address is for our Raspberry Pi. And we either got that on the configuration page, as Screenly started up for the first time, or we went to our router and looked it up in the configuration there. And just right up there where it, uh, the, uh, the cursor is flashing, you just want to put in the IP address. So it's uh, for mine, it's 192.168.1. And I can't remember what the last ones were. I think it was uh, 0.129 or 128. That sounds right. You can leave everything else the same, port 22 SSH. That all looks good. And go ahead and start it up. It gives you a warning. It's never seen this computer before. You're fine. Or that adapter before. You're fine. And then you get a little console screen. For the Raspberry Pi, the default password, or I'm sorry, username is Pi, P-I. The default password is Raspberry, all in small letters. So we'll go ahead and type that in. And that'll log us into the machine. And now you've really got a Linux machine that you're working with. And we can go ahead and get done what we need to get done. OK, so we're going back to the instructions now, because we always follow the instructions. And it tells us to run the command sudo raspy-config. And the reason we're going to do that is we want to do two things. One, we want to make sure we're using the whole memory card. And the other is we want to make sure we have secure shell enabled. OK, fair enough. So we go in here, and uh, it says expand file system. We go ahead and click on that, and it expands the file system. So now we're using the whole memory card. Good. We're good to go with that. Uh, you look down, it has some other options. Uh, if you want to go ahead and take care of those, the other thing we were trying to do was to make sure we were using Secure Shell. That's in Advanced Options, I believe. So you go into Advanced Options. You see fourth one down, SSH, Secure Shell. Enable or Disable. Seems kind of silly to me. I logged in via Secure Shell, so I think it's working already. But I can click on that, hit Enable, and then that will take care of it automatically for me. And now Secure Shell is enabled. You can look at some of the other options, but really there's nothing else we need to do at this point. Uh, but you can see some of the other things that you might want to configure. So we'll go ahead and back out of this eventually. You can use up, down arrows, and then tab to get to the select and back and finish. We're going to go ahead and finish, and then it's going to ask us if we want to reboot now. So we do want to reboot now because that will help the whole configuration uh, take place. So we'll go ahead and say yes, reboot. It will disconnect us, and we'll come back to it and finish up some of our other configuration items. OK, so now at this point, uh, you're going to be knocked out of your uh, connection to the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to have to go back in through Putty again, doing it the same way you did before. And we're going to go ahead and update the software. So the way to do this is uh, go back to the uh, Install Screenly page. You're going to go back down to the bottom. And see where it says Update Screenly? Uh, you're just going to go ahead and copy that and type that in on Putty. And that's going to go ahead and update the Screenly app for you. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. 
And then uh, I've come back now. I've, I've made it a little bigger this time. I'm logged in to the Pi. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do sudo apt-dat-get update. And that's going to actually update the whole operating system before I do the screenly update. So sudo apt-dat-get update. See how it's doing all this sort of stuff? You need an internet connection while you're doing this, of course. And it's updating uh, Debian Wheezy. That's the operating system. Always a good thing to do to do an app get update. Okay, I couldn't wait that long, so I jumped to the end. Now I cut out about a minute and a half there. So now I'm back to the uh, command prompt, and I want to go ahead and put in that screenly upgrade. To do that, I did a control V, and control V just pasted it in there. So uh, you go ahead and just run it exactly like that. And when you hit enter, it'll go ahead and update the Screenly application as well. So at this point, we've upgraded the operating system and updated Screenly. Okay, I did a clear, just took it up to the top. And I'll go ahead and do a Control V again. Okay, put the command there. Now I'll run it so you can see what happens when you run that command. It just goes ahead and updates the application itself. Again, it takes about a minute or so in order to do it. So at this point, we've got the card in there. Uh, the application is pretty much running. We've expanded it to use the whole memory card. We've updated the operating system. We're in the process of updating Screenly. And uh, everything will work just perfect. Now, again, you want to do a reboot restart your computer to get everything to work. So to do that we're going to use the command sudo space shutdown dash r which means restart now. And it shuts the system down and we'll be ready to go. Okay what I've done here this shows you the Screenly uh, schedule configuration page which you go to via going to the IP address colon 8080. Okay, one of the things you might want to do is change the password for the user Pi. You don't have to do that now. I'm just showing you how to do it. Uh, basically, you can search for it on a web page, which is what I did. And you find that you do it just by issuing the password command, P-A-S-S-W-D. And it will prompt you for the old password and allow you to get a new one. Not going to do it. Just wanted to show you how to do it. Some of the other things we're going to do, we're going to need to get around in Linux a little bit. So Linux, if you've used DOS, it's easy. If you haven't used Linux, you're going to want to reference some commands. CD is change directory. I've just got the screen up here doing a couple different things. LS is list the file contents in that directory. Those blue things are folders. Those are places you can go into by doing a CD and switching into them. Right, so etc up there would be a folder. I could do a cd etc, and that'll move me to the etc folder. I do an ls, and you can see all the files and folders that are in that etc folder. I can do cd, and then a dot dot, I believe. Nope, cd, and then a slash to take me back to the root folder, which is the very beginning one. Do an ls and you can see that's where I was before. Clear is a command that just clears the screen so I know where I'm going or uh, can clean things up a little bit. And then I'm going to use a program called Nano. Nano is how we change the configuration files. It's an editing program. So Nano is the program that I want to do. When I do everything in this, I always do sudo. Sudo makes you the most powerful user in the world which is a good thing to do, and we'll see that we use sudo later on. But for now, I'm going to go to my home directory. So I'm going to do a cd home pi ls. There's nothing there, right? And I'm going to create a file, and I'm going to edit it with nano. So I do sudo, which makes me all-powerful, nano, and then the name of the file that I'm going to change or make. And this is just going to be test underscore file dot txt. When I hit enter, nano comes up. Now those little things you see at the bottom are the control key. So I'm just going to type into a file 
uh, this is a test file. When I have that uh, percent sign or uh, I guess uh, hash in front of it, that means it's a comment. Um, and then I did a control X to leave, but it doesn't automatically save it. So I do a control O to write out the file, which saves the file. You can see that down there. And then I can do a control X and I've saved the file. I do an ls and you can see the test files there. Very simple. Linux is easy to work with. Okay, so one file you're going to want to change is your boot slash config.txt file. And I'm just going to show you the file. I'm not going to do anything to it. So if I want to get into it, I do sudo nano slash boot slash config.txt. This is the file that the Raspberry Pi uses when it boots up. And so uh, the reason you want to change is because it, it puts it in the right configuration for some of the things that you want to do, especially with the display. So I'm just going to show it to you. You can find uh, internet pages that show you exactly what each of these things do. Uh, disable overscan, something that you might want to change. Changing the overscan, which is how it fits on your particular screen. You can tune that so that all looks very good. If you only have a 720p screen instead of a 1080p, you can change the configuration here to make sure it's forced into that particular configuration. And then you just scroll down through the file. There are some other things you want to do. Those HDMI groups and HDMI modes forces it to 720p at 60 hertz. Uh, it will usually work, but this way you'll clean up the whole program uh, when you're uh, going ahead and working with it. So I just wanted to show that to you because you will probably get into this file as you set things up. If you buy the decode keys for the Raspberry Pi, you put them in there. That works on my machine, not yours. It's specific to the Raspberry Pi. So in any case, that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and control X out of this and not change anything. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you my wireless configuration file. Why do I do this? Because it works. There are various ways to do it. You can look at how to set up wireless on a Debian Wheezy Raspberry Pi. So I do sudo nano slash etc slash network dot, oh, I'm sorry, network slash interfaces. That's the file you want to look at. And those four lines down at the bottom are basically what I set up to set up the wireless. Now you can see that that points to another file, wpa underscore supplicant dot config. And so if I get out of here and go look at that file, just getting to that file again, again doing sudo nano, even though I'm not going to edit it, I'm just going to go ahead and look at it and show it, show you what it looks like slash et c slash wa underscore supplicant slash w p a it can be a pain to find these files sometime in any case this is where that is and in here is where i'm going to choose what sort of network i have wpa2 and i'm going to show also uh, my ssid and my password to get into that network obviously that's filled in with mine that's not my real SSID for my network and my uh, wireless password. Just wanted to show you what I have here. Again, in case you're setting yours up and you're in a similar, similar situation, you can look at this video and kind of choose what's there. So again, the hashtag is, uh, means it's a comment, not a command. Uh, just wanted you to see what's there. So I'll go ahead and uh, get out of this and we can go ahead. Uh, I'm not going to modify anything. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next piece of the equation. Okay, at this point you've got the wireless set up. Your system is pretty much working, but you can set up dynamic DNS to access your Pi from anywhere. So if you've got it set up at a particular location, you can get to it from somewhere else. This Mivia's blog, free dynamic DNS for Raspberry Pi, this is what I used in order to step myself through and uh, set up a dynamic DNS account. You want to do that sudo apt-get install ddc ddclient. Uh, that will go ahead and install ddclient for dynamic uh, dynamic client. 
that your Raspberry Pi can use and then that's your configuration file that you set up down there so again just following the steps you may not need to do this but if you do I just uh, got to work on mine and I wanted to show you an example that worked I was able to access the computer uh, well far away uh, by using this and, and change the configuration and also to be able to get in there and, and work with the uh, screenly schedule in order to uh, change which items were being shown on the screenly screen so sudo nano slash etc gotta make sure I know what the file is I go back and look at the file okay now I know what it is I think slash dd client dot config and again this will be exclusive to you but I'm just showing you what my configuration file looks like I go ahead and scroll down and you will have have to have set up a free DNS service uh, using your login your password for that service and the server that that service is giving you but again it works so just want to show you that capability one other little trick coming up although this doesn't really help you all that much is uh, setting up your local time zone uh, when you install screenly this way it is set up to Gren Greenwich Mean Time so if you go ahead and do this sudo dpackage reconfigure tz data at the command line it will take you into an application where you can go ahead and set the time zone doesn't help all that much because I have found that even though you set the local time zone whenever you put it into the schedule here and you're adding an asset it seems to default to uh, Greenwich Mean Time so that is just something you have to watch hopefully they'll fix this in the future so you may not want to set up a local time zone you may just want to keep it Greenwich Mean Time that way you're not converting one thing I found after running my Raspberry Pi for a couple days straight and the program was that after about two days the program was crashing and I'm not exactly sure why but I think the wireless configuration is just taking everything down so here's the trick I came up with I'm going to go ahead and reset the computer every night at 3 o'clock in the morning the way I do this is using a program called crontab so to do that you do a sudo crontab dash e and that brings up a file where you can set it to do commands at certain times again this is nano you go ahead it explains I'll let you look up how to do the command but basically those numbers you see down there is saying that every day at three o'clock in the morning every day of the week every uh, month day of the week I'm doing a slash s bin slash shutdown command dash r now and so at three o'clock in the morning my Raspberry Pi is doing a restart that restart seems to clean up whatever wireless configuration problem I'm having and the program runs fine the rest of the time so I've done that had it run solid for two weeks doing a reset every night if you find your program is crashing I suggest you go ahead and try this little trick using crontab other hints these are useful sites I found um, in putting my system together nerdlogger has some good Raspberry Pi um, pieces you want to look through and also screenly specific pieces uh, that may help you put your configuration together um, he talks about some of those things in the config.txt file or uh, the boot config file and so uh, it's a good thing to read if you're putting your system together you may find some hints and tips again he's got lots of information another one to be aware of is uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi wiki Raspberry Pi configuration file this gives you all those details in that configuration file uh, and what you use them for so if you want to customize it for your particular system this is the place to go to in order to look for those sorts of things 
tell you how to en edit it from Windows PC, give you an example file. This is good to look through. There's the overscan I was talking about. Uh, when you go in and edit your config text out file, uh, this is a great reference for you to look at. Along the same lines as the RPI config file, and the advantage of this one is it shows you what all those different options do. So it's very good for setting up your particular Raspberry Pi to work with a particular monitor. You can see all of these monitor explanations are laid out exactly correct so you can match it up. Good thing to do. So I know this has been a long and boring video. I apologize for that. But I just wanted to go through and show you all the different options you could do to put together your Raspberry Pi, what it was like to work uh, at the command line for the Raspberry Pi as well, so that you'd have a good idea of what to do. Wonderful, pro, or, uh, wonderful application. So appreciative they put it out. And hopefully you'll uh, find it and use it and have fun with it as well. Thanks.